I believe I can translate. Boomerang has a concussion. From the enemy you missed in our last encounter. <laughs> Guess those teeth are sharper than your eyes, Shark Man. I never, you never miss. miss. Never miss. Yeah, yeah, we bloody know. You never shut up about it. <laughs> So I don't usually make too many videos about video games, but this week a scandal blew up across the interwebs that I just had to chime in on. Sweet Baby Inc. has been under fire from fans ever since Suicide Squad killed the Justice League, released to terrible reviews from pretty much anyone with a brain. But exactly who or what is Sweet Baby Inc.? What did they do? And what can anyone do about it? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive into the intricacies of the video game industry. The majority of people out there have never heard of Sweet Baby Inc. or really any management consulting company. You may have heard the names McKinsey, Bain, and Boston Consulting Group thrown around. But what exactly do these companies do? Well, they definitely want you to think that's a complicated question, but it isn't. In a nutshell, consulting companies advise companies on business strategy. I haven't hired and fired a thousand management consultants. I know all of your bullshit tricks. The company can either implement the solution or continue going on their merry way. Kind of like John Taffer on Bar Rescue. Do you know how much cheese is in this? In the wake of BlackRock's DEI initiative, a lot of companies needed to retool to get their ESG scores up in the eyes of Larry Fink. So they hired outside consulting companies to help them with that. Enter Sweet Baby Inc. Sweet Baby Inc. describes itself as, quote, narrative development and consultation studio based in Montreal and working around the globe. Our mission is to tell better, more empathetic stories while diversifying and enriching the video games industry. We aim to make games more engaging, more fun, more meaningful, and more inclusive for everyone. Okay. So in other words, Sweet Baby Inc. got hired to spread the message. Now, as far as Suicide Squad killed the Justice League is concerned, there were so many problems with this game that I won't waste time on it. But suffice it to say that Sweet Baby Inc. made things worse for themselves by doubling down and attacking the fans. Because you see, the fans are racist, sexist, misogynistic, and they must be dealt with permanently. Now, if I didn't know any better, I'd say that the rhetoric coming out of Sweet Baby Inc. is following some sort of script that I may have heard of before. Typical progressive buzzwords such as toxic fans, bigoted fans, and angry crybaby white men are tossed around. We've all heard these terms before, and it's just a predictable strategy at this point, which begs me to question, why did game companies hire a third-rate C-tier consulting firm rather than hiring a well-established firm like McKinsey or BCG. Well, for one, basically every company in the Western world over the last decade has swallowed the ESG poison. So why hire an expensive firm like McKinsey if you're just gonna get the same result? And it's not like the proposed solutions made better video games. The examples of how ESG and progressive ideology of diversity and inclusion has ruined gaming in the past is wide. You don't have to go far before being hit in the face with a shovel full of DEI these days. Suicide Squad, Spider-Man 2, and Uncharted are just a few of the games affected by ESG policies. And let's not even get into the disaster of The Last of Us Part 2. Uh, did I mention Ellie was gay? There you are, Miss Kennedy, the linguine and clam sauce. Uh, excuse me, I believe I asked you to put a chicken in this and make her gay? Uh, yes, the chef was a little confused what you meant by that. Means put a chicken in the linguine and make her fucking gay! And I want it lame! The point is that simply signaling your virtues doesn't make a better product. Oftentimes, games are buggy as fuck. They're incomplete buggy disasters exactly because of ESG policies. 
because you don't get the best labor when you judge someone by the color of their skin or what's in between their legs. Hiring practices that center on race and gender rather than skill and experience lead to inferior products. Let me put it this way. If you are going in for neurosurgery where precision, skill, experience, intelligence, and ability are all crucial, would you give one solitary fuck whether the doctor was diverse? No, of course not. I don't want a black pansexual genderqueer surgeon. I want the best surgeon possible. So is it really the fans that are racist, sexist, and bigoted? I don't think so. Some are, but not all of them. But you know what's racist, sexist, and bigoted? ESG and the subsequent hiring practices we've seen. Wasn't it Martin Luther King Jr. that said not to judge people by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character? When did progressives forget about MLK? Didn't they tout him as a legendary hero? If these fans were so racist and bigoted, why did the Spider-Verse movies do so well in theaters? <laughs> Gosh, Mike, you really got me there. If these fans were all bigoted, it stands to reason the movie would have bombed. But these movies didn't bomb. They didn't bomb because they didn't focus on all this DEI nonsense. They focused on good story, good character development, and good world building. All the hallmarks of a great movie. Sony focused on telling a good story, and they were handsomely rewarded for it. Well, at least until Morbius and Madam Web, but that's a topic for another video. As a video game developer, if you write in your mission statement that your aim is to create more fun and engaging games, then you have to listen to your target audience. As I've mentioned in quite a number of my videos, you can't create demand where none exists. You have to listen to your customers and deliver what they want. It's really that simple. When audiences tell you your product sucks, maybe listening and pivoting your business strategy is the right move. And a lot of companies have been listening and doing just that. Every week you hear about companies hacking and slashing their DEI divisions. They're finally realizing that when you get woke, you go broke. Just ask Anheuser-Busch. And when it comes to games or movies that have come out of this ESG DEI nonsense, we get male heroes that literally get pissed on like in the Suicide Squad game. Yet Wonder Woman gets an honorable and respectful death which she completely deserves because she's a woman. It's ridiculously regressive thinking. Man bad, woman good. And yes, I know the game is called Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League, so you do have to kill them, but at least do it in an honorable and dignified way. Do it in a way that gives their deaths meaning and poignancy. But I don't think they're capable of doing that. They're not capable of doing that because, as I've mentioned in my Dark Age of Cinema series, they're just not good writers. They suck at their job, and this is the best they can do. The only reason they've got this job was not because of their skills and experience, but because they ticked the right box on the HR application form. So is it really a wonder that video game fans are so pissed off at a company like Sweet Baby Inc? Sweet Baby Inc. is just the latest Alyssa Heinerscheid incident. Out of touch executives who have no clue who their target demographic is think they have a better business strategy. But as the Bud Light and Target controversies proved, boycotts do work. This is just the latest example of how going woke negatively impacts revenue streams. But what do you guys think about all this? Do you think we've seen the last of ESG? Or is this yet another domino to fall in a long line? Please do let me know down below in the comments. And as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. So, figure out who we're killing yet?